You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. It is, uh, there were some comments that I saw. They talked about uh, all of the death that we have to experience. In fact, I was, there was a, someone had posted a comment in a chat group uh, that I'm a member of, and they said this, and it was very interesting. They said, my oh my, how good are we at burying our people? We've had way too much practice. How do we deal with and confront uh, the black mental health uh, when it comes to these issues in terms of this, what is some called secondary trauma? We're joining us right now out of Ohio is uh, attorney and mental health advocate, Corey Minor smith Corey, glad to have you in Roller Martin Unfiltered. Speak to that issue in terms of dealing with these fundamental problems of, of people seeing this, that how we have to give trigger warning before we show video on here. People have to do the exact same thing. Instagram actually sets it to where before you can actually see some content, you can label it to give people an opportunity not to have to watch it. Yes, it's very important to have those opportunities to turn away. For many of us, it's just generational trauma in and of itself compounded with everything that we're seeing in present time and even yesterday. And I just want to take this opportunity to extend my condolences to Makaya Bryant's family and the Columbus community. This is all very traumatic for us. As we continue to observe, as we continue to hear, it's not it's like an inoculation of trauma every time we see something, every time we hear something. And then you have to hear or maybe you're engaging in the discourse centered around all of these different instances that we're seeing almost daily where people like us, black people, brown people, people of color are being killed without weapons, even if they are innocent, they are being killed. And especially for our children, it's important for us to take the time to talk to them about these incidents because they are seeing people that are of their same age or around their age who are being killed by law enforcement. So it's a very scary situation. And many times we just need to stop and turn off the social media and turn off the news and use that opportunity to love up on our family members and take the time to really truly engage in discussions with our loved ones about the things that we're experiencing through secondary trauma. So how do we deal with it? Because uh, there was a comment I just see right now, Zeta Jones on YouTube says, uh, we haven't dealt with it, we're just coping. Right, so we need to, as especially in the black community, to embrace the opportunities to engage in counseling. There's a lot of stigma associated with mental health and for sure to go out to receive treatment from a counselor or a therapist or a psychiatrist or to rely on medications. So it's important for us as a community to embrace opportunities to engage in counseling and to take the opportunity to you know, incorporate that in our religious beliefs as well. So it doesn't make you less than a Christian because you rely on outside sources other than prayer and leaving your issues at the altar. But these things are very real, even if they're not happening to us. But for many of us, we've had these things happen in our own families. And so it's important that we take the opportunity to address it individually and collectively. Um, and so uh, and so with that, I mean, obviously, um, you know, we can do that as individuals. It's very easy to say turn it off when the fact we, we people are living. I mean, they, you know, it's ubiquitous, uh, these uh, these devices. And so um, uh, and, and so when we talk about talking with children about it. Uh, what do we say? Are there any other tools that can be provided uh, to help people? Yes, absolutely. I encourage people to look into community organizations like NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, that has a lot of resources available for free. There's the opportunity to call 1-800 numbers that are confidential and free and available 24-7. But personally, as a mother, I have two sons, and both of them have had their individuals that they personally identified with and felt the fear. As a mother, I couldn't truly understand their fear, 
but they expressed it the best that they could. So when I'm talking about talking to children, I'm talking to them in real terms that they can understand and helping them to cope with their feelings. As parents or loved ones of children, we may not be able to do it alone, but we can go with our child to talk to a counselor so that they can feel free and opening up and expressing how they feel. It may not be easy, but the first step is for the caregiver to sit the child down and just listen and take the opportunity to try to understand how the child is feeling and then work together to um, have coping mechanisms that the children can use when they're not in your presence or when you all are together. So for example, my youngest son, he was around, he is around the age and would have been uh, Tamir Rice if he was still alive. And when he heard of Tamir Rice's death, my son did not want me to pick him up from his grandmother's house, which was literally down the street. But he was so fearful of the police that day that he literally begged me not to come and pick him up from his grandmother's house. He asked me, why do they hate us so much? He, did, he said that, you know, they would pull us over and kill us. And that was his fear. That was his thought. So I couldn't immediately, immediately tell my son, no, don't feel that way. You don't have to feel that way. But as a mother, hearing his words, I had to listen to what he had to say and then help him to um, navigate through how he was feeling and then offering that opportunity for him to talk to a professional if he chose to do so. So our children know way more than we know. Of course, I wouldn't have wanted him to see the videos, but he did. It's easily accessible to all of us and especially our children. My oldest son, directly identified with Trayvon Martin. And he felt scared to just go to his grandmother's house on the bus. And he notified or he advised me or warned me that he might not come home. And I didn't understand what he meant. But he told me Trayvon Martin was just going to the store and he never came home. I'm going to grandma's house on the bus, but I might not come home. And that's a very, very real feeling. And it's, it's scary as a parent to hear that because you don't know what you can do. And there's very little you can do when your child is not in your presence. Corey, uh, Minor Smith, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Greg, Carl, I want to start with Carl, we'll start with you. How do you deal with this in your students, your class? Because surely this comes up. Well, I think uh, Attorney Smith is right. We, the first thing we, uh, that I try to do is remind them that this is a safe space. It's one of the reasons that they chose coming to a black college. That's number one. And then, as she said, I listen. But I listen with an ear that is attuned as a black man to the fact that we experience this trauma in ways that make us internalize our true feelings. And so what I found over the years, I guess now over 25 years of teaching between Ohio State Temple and, and now Howard, uh, classically close to 30, what I found is that when we are comfortable and when we have our conversations with each other, if we can let go of that fear, what comes out is the rage, what comes out is the anger. And sometimes it has to be uh, triggered with a prompt. So in my hip hop class, for example, when we get to the part now in the early 90s, we start talking about gangster rap, sort of, I'll play, fuck the police, coming straight from the underground. Young brother got it bad, cause I'm brown. And they, they think they have the authority to kill a minority, but, but see, I ain't the one for a punk motherfucker with a badge and a gun to be beaten on. I said, now what do y'all think about that? What comes out is the anger. See, because what that trauma breeds is fear. And we often respond to the fear by somehow reinforcing the idea that we can't stand up straight and express what we think. And I think that is the thing that cripples us. Because when you let go of that fear, when you're in a comfortable space, that's when you can begin to address your full humanity. Not only should we be enraged, we should be comfortable in sitting in the feeling that if you come for me, if I can't even do it, I fantasize about killing you before you kill me. And I can say that out of my mouth, stand up straight and not worry about any white lash because I'm in a black space. That's why I chose to work in a black institution. And any Negro that thinks somehow that's an inappropriate response, I tell them very simply, look in the mirror and deal with your fear. Don't be scared. Free yourself. Oma Congo, how do you uh, uh, confront this in your classroom? This is uh, amazing hearing Dr. Carr speak on this because I am in the exact 
opposite situation teaching at American University where the majority of my students are white. And I've had situations where I've had students ask me to share, have a, a disclaimer before I would show some of these videos when I would show them in earlier times. And I said, it's very interesting. We talk about a disclaimer, but for us, it's every day on loop. We can't escape these videos. We have to work intentionally to try to escape these things. And so, number one, you're, you're, you're asking to have you know, your emotions be protected, which I respect, but how do we put into a place where you're respecting our emotions? And then I ask them another question. I tell them, every time I see one of these videos, depending on who it is, I see myself, family member, friend, sister, parent, brother, whatever, do you see yourself? or anybody else in your family or in your friend group in these videos that you see. And the major overwhelming majority of them will say no, and I tell them that's the problem. Your inability to humanize us in the way you humanize your own community is why these situations will continue to happen. You won't see them. You will assume the knowledge, that the, the mindset of, well, they must have done something. You know, police are always right. My dad's a cop, my aunt was in the military, and therefore, and I know they're good, and we do the work by the end of the semester to break that. And many of the students who come through my class, they end up seeing what we're talking about and they come out being advocates for the things that we're talking about tonight. But they're not coming in with that knowledge and with those emotions. And so it's a lot of work to get them there, but it's worthy work because we're going to also need them in this fight as well. Mm -hmm. Final comment, Amisha Cross. So I, I'm most I'm concerned across the board, but I think I'm most concerned when it comes to K through 12 students because they don't have the privilege of having a doctor car in the classroom. Ninety seven percent of K through 12 students, black students across this country are taught by white women. So at the end of the day, um, they don't have someone who is an empowering advocate in front of them, you know, reinstilling or talking about this in a way that can help them not be afraid, in a way that can help them not push towards anger, in a way that can help them focus their energies. They have teachers in front of them who honestly don't see the plight, in many cases do not care, and aren't even having the conversations like we're having or even, you know, on a, sm a smaller scale in their classrooms. We're also acknowledging the fact that a lot of the victims of police brutality do happen to be children of color. We're talking about your Trayvon Martins. We're talking about your, um, we're talking about a, a lot of, we're talking about what we just saw happen in Ohio. We're talking about what we saw with Laquan McDonald in Chicago. We have seen time after time where K through 12 young people are losing their lives to white supremacy and they don't have an outlet. They don't have counselors in the majority of these, um, these schools that are predominantly African-American. And in many cases, the counselors that they do have don't want to talk about police brutality. Um, so this is a, a case for me where my great concern is what are we doing for the K through 12 students? What are we doing for the students who don't have that, that pillar in the classroom that can have those conversations? What are we doing for those students who are living in fear, not because of what's going on in their communities, but because they know that this protect and serve mantra does not affect them. That protect and serve obviously means that in many cases, their black bodies are the things that are the most brutalized. Their black bodies are the things that police officers happen to be afraid of for whatever reason. And I think that we have to really take that into consideration because in our public schools, school resource officers, SROs, are funded at much higher rates than our counseling services are for these young people. So they are left to fend for themselves. All right, folks, back to our roadmark unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. we win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.